I weighed the most I had ever weighed. And that was 312 pounds, as you guys can see here in the picture. Now, a lot of different things contributed to this weight gain. And the interesting thing is, is that before I weighed 312 pounds, before I got before I was my heaviest, I was I actually had gotten myself into fantastic shape just a couple of years before. A couple of years before that, I think I was 260. And then I hit the gym, and I mean, I think I got all, all the way down to like 205. I might even might have even been down to 195. Um, I mean, I was ripped. And somewhere along the way, um, I stopped going to the gym. Um, one thing led to another, and I ballooned to 312 pounds. Now, obviously, there are many factors. There are many contributing factors involved. You know, for one, um, I was lazy. I just, you know, I mean, listen, I got lazy. I, I did what it took to get into shape. But after I got there, I rested on my laurels and said, oh, you know, I've got good genetics. I don't ha I don't really have to work hard to to stay in good shape. And lo and behold, there I am at 312 pounds. Another thing that contributed to it is that my ex-wife, uh, Darcy, was a very, very good cook. Um, I can talk all the shit I want about her being a bad wife and this and that and the other one thing that was undeniable is that she could burn in the kitchen. And listen, I've got a big appetite and she never, listen, she withheld sex all the time. She never withheld me from food. And so, and so uh, she was always happy to oblige when I asked for seconds or thirds or fourths. So anyway, I'm fat, I'm out of shape, I'm fatigued, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm unhealthy. I've got no blood flow to my dick. I'm terrible at sex. I mean, things were things were just really, really bad. And so I decided, it's, it's funny, I decided to actually get into shape um, when I think we went pants shopping. And I remember I was like a size 50 or something. It was like 48 or 50, and the pants were fucking huge. And I remember Darcy telling me, yeah, Donovan, it's it's time to, it's time to start dropping the weight. Uh, so that was that was sort of my wake up call. And a few years later, we separated and, and eventually eventually got divorced. But the fact of the matter is, is that there were a lot of things I did in the beginning that really, really helped my weight loss. And it helped me to and it really helped helped me to keep it off. We all know that diet and exercise is the best way to get and to stay in shape that listen, that's conventional wisdom. We all know that stuff. But the beginning of the beginning of one's weight loss journey, the beginning of one's lifestyle change is absolutely critical to your overall success. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you, yes, I did, you know, I, I, I ate this or, or I'm not going to sit here and say, yes, I dieted like this and I exercise like that. There will be some of that in this particular volume, but that's not re what really I'm going to focus on. I'm going to talk about the things I did to not only jumpstart, but, but the things that gave me a decided advantage in losing this weight. Um, so what I did, and, it, and it's interesting how I actually kind of figured this out. I heard somewhere that if you do anything for 21 straight days, it becomes a habit. And so when I decided to lose weight, I decided, okay, I'm not just going to start all of these habits all at once, because if I do that, I'm going to burn out. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to end up failing. What I decided to do was I decided to take on one habit at a time. And from there, I would stack one habit on top of another. So for 21 straight days, I would do X. Then after 21 days, I would do X and Y. Another 21 days goes by. Now it's X, Y, and Z. And before you know it, I'm living, I'm living a much better life. I've, I've got all of these habits that help me keep the weight off. And now, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not in the best shape of my life. I'm actually probably going to be there in another six months or so, but I'm far from the 312 pound behemoth that you see on your screen now. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about the things that I did in the beginning that gave me a decided advantage with regards to, uh, with regards to dropping from 312, uh, all the way down, I think to 215. Uh, that's, that's probably the lightest I've been as of late. I'm probably closer to 230 now. Anyway, so here we go. The first thing I did was a body cleanse. What I did is, and I don't know what motivated me to do this, but this was absolutely the right thing to do. This, th guys, this, this, this was unbelievable. I think I was watching some sort of documentary or something on John Wayne, and I remember, I remember it tell, I remember the documentary saying something, and I don't really know if it's true or not. 
I don't really remember it that well, but I remember they said when they exu- when when they did the autopsy on John Wayne, they found 77 pounds of impacted feces in his colon, in his large intestine. And I mean, I've got the I mean, I've got the internet up right in front of me. I'm not going to look up how John Wayne died, but even, whether that's true or not, I, I mean, listen, 77 pounds, 17 pounds, 20 pounds, whatever the case may be, they found all that impacted feces in his colon. Um, and and so what I decided to do, I said, well, wait a minute, you know, I, maybe I have a bunch of impacted feces in my colon. I'd never had a colon. I'd never had my colon cleaned. I'd never had a colonic. And so what I decided to do is I decided to give myself a home colonic. No, I didn't stick anything up my ass. I didn't do that home colonic kit. I certainly didn't do that. Not even close. What I did is I took a laxative. I took liquid magnesium citrate and I was actually going to, I've actually got the bottle uh, around here somewhere, but it's liquid magnesium citrate. You can get this at your local target, Walmart. I get it at the Dollar Tree because I'm a cheapskate. I drink, and you can get it in lemon or cherry. I think those, those are the only two flavors. It actually doesn't taste that bad, but it's very, very sour and very, very strong. It's got some sweetness to it too, but it's it's not. You can't chug it all down unless you're some sort of a mutant. Anyway, I dr- and they tell you take two teaspoons for or two tablespoons or something for you know of effective gentle relief. I down the whole ten ounces. Um, and again, I'm not a doctor. This is not. This is certainly not medical advice. I would not. Me personally, I knew that I could get away with it uh, because I had done it before. But it had been, I think it had been 10 years since I had done that. I took a bunch of X-Lax and cleaned myself out. So I drank the whole 10 ounces. And in about five hours, I started shitting my absolute brains. Guys, it was, dude, it was absolutely massive. It completely cleaned me out. I drank that bottle of magnesium citrate at, it was like six or seven in the morning because I didn't want to eat anything. And I drank, I made sure I drank plenty of water. I stepped on the scale. That morning at 312 pounds, I stepped on the scale the day after and I was 306 pounds. I had lost six. I had gone from 312 to 306. So, and and listen, guys, even after drinking nearly a gallon of water, which I would highly recommend doing when you are doing this cleanse, because doing this can highly, highly, um, it can really dehydrate you. Even after drinking a gallon of water, which I think is seven pounds or something, I'm sure I pissed and shit it out too. I was I I got I went from 312 to 306. So I had already lost 6 pounds. Not only that is when you do when you do like uh you know sort of like a makeshift ghetto redneck or whatever the kind that is uh body cleanse, it really does clean out your colon. Um after that your shit is solid providing you're eating the right foods, which I'm going to get to uh here in a second. I'm not going to get into diet plans. I'm just going to tell you what I stayed away from. But after that, like you feel better. It's almost like you can breathe deeper because your colon is just smaller because all of that meat, that that's really what the colon has. Um, this is why they tell you stay away from red meat because it, it collects in your colon. Every, I would say every six months or so since then, every six months, I'll take a bottle of magnesium citrate and I'll drink the whole thing. As a matter of fact, I actually did it last week. Last week was the six month was, was the was the six month mark for yours truly. I downed it shit all day. Now I'm not I don't lose six pounds. I probably lost a pound or two. Um, but but that was the first thing that got me jump started. So already I'm like, wow, look at this. I'm already six pounds down. Now I can build on this. The second thing I did, and this one again is very obvious. I stopped eating out. I I stopped eating out completely fast food, sit down restaurant. And I cooked all, I had my wife cook all my meals. Sometimes I would cook my meals too. Guys, this, this isn't that hard once you start, but when the real, the the real challenge is when, is when, uh, is when you don't have a lot of time or you are tired and hungry. When you're tired and hungry guys, that's when, that's when poor food choices rear their ugly head. I'm driving home from work. I've worked two. I've worked two hours of overtime, dude. I'm starving because I'm 300 and something pounds, and I gotta get something to eat. I haven't eaten since 12. It's 7:30 at night. I'm passing by McDonald's, Burger King, guys. You, you absolutely listen. You absolutely have to stop eating out. I did this for 21 straight days. I didn't deprive myself of eating out, at least not from the onset. I said, okay. I'm going to I'm going to go and have a Big Mac at the end of 21 days. That was going to be my reward for having completely stayed off of fast food and eating out for 21 straight days. 
would you here a, a, a welcome side effect to not eating out or going out to eat is that it is much less expensive to cook your own meals. It's much less time consuming, but it's a lot less expensive. Over that three weeks, I found that I had more money in my pocket when than than when I was eating out every. I'm mean, dude. Me and my wife were eating out every day. I mean, every day. I mean, dude. I mean, I get I get up. My day was like this. Get up, drink coffee with a bunch of sugar in it, and now I use Truvia with my coffee. Loaded it up with all kinds of uh, coffee creamers and caramel mocha and this and that and the other. Suck that down. That's five six hundred calories. On the way to work, I'd stop at McDonald's, get a couple of, you know, egg McMuffins or whatever. Sometimes I'd stop at Chick-fil-A, get like a chicken biscuit or whatever with some with some tater tots, and I would always wash that down with a soda. Then for lunch, i go to McDonald's or Burger Guys, I mean, it did not take... It, it, and this happened over a long period of time. This was a lifestyle. This is why it blew up to 312 pounds. Well, by then, I think, uh, I think two weeks in, my wife didn't like the fact that she had to cook every single night, right? I said, Darcy, we are not, we're not eating out. We're not doing fast food. And of course, all women are like, okay, yeah, I want to lose weight too. Cause she, I, we were both fat. She was fat. I was fat. And so I told her, I said, look, we're going to cook all our meals and this and that and the other. And I told her, I said, listen, I'm more than happy to take turns cooking. No, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Dude, at less than two weeks, she's like, look, I can't, I'm not going to cook every night. So she stopped cooking, but I didn't care. I ended up cooking my own meals. I did it for 21 straight days. As a matter of fact, when day 22 came, I didn't even go to McDonald's because I had like um, I had like a, a steak and broccoli dinner, a steak lobster and broccoli dinner that I had planned that night. And it's funny, after 21 days of not eating junk, you know, I, I thought, to, I, and it was funny because I knew that today was McDonald's. I was like, okay, well, today is McDonald's day. I remember passing by McDonald's and I'm like, you know what? Steak, lobster, and broccoli sounds a lot better than a Big Mac, fries, and a Coke. And so now eventually I would start eating fast food again, but not nearly as often as I did. I limited, this is what I did post 312, is I limited it. I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to eat fast food once a month. That's it. I'll go to a sit down restaurant once a month. And even then I will try to keep it as close to clean or ketogenic as I possibly could. So that's the second thing I did. I stopped eating out doing fast food, and I cooked all of my meals for 21 straight days. After a while, it's a habit, and now, you know, of course, me and my girl, she, you know, she cooks my meals, and and, uh, that's just how that is. The third thing I did, and this was, this was by far and away the most difficult. I cut all sugars and got all of my carbs from vegetables. Guys, no cookies, no candy, no sweets, no sodas, no diet sodas, which are worse for you, no juice, not even fruit. Don't, listen, don't be the guy who says, I'm going to cut out all sugar except for fruit, and then you gorge yourself with fruit, and now you're gaining weight. Guys, listen, it doesn't matter what form sugar is in, sugar is sugar. Whether Now, listen, obviously, you'd rather eat an orange than a chocolate bar, but at the end of the day, it's both sugar. If you want to re, listen, if you want to really supercharge your weight loss, Guys, it's not easy. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it is, but you must cut all of your sugar. It sucked, guys, and it was hard. The first week, as a matter of fact, I think it was like the first three or four days after day three, I started to get headaches. Guys, I was ad- look, guys, I was addicted to sugar. I was addicted to Coca-Cola, sweet tea from Bojangles. I lived in North Carolina, but in, but but here's the thing. After I cut out all sugar, and took in absolutely zero carbs except for from green vegetables, not potatoes, not anything starchy. It was all green vegetables. Went completely ketogenic, no sugar. Guys, I lost eight pounds just by doing that. And after the fir- and after maybe I would say maybe day six or seven, the headaches started going away. Guys, eight pounds. And guys, I'm not even in the gym yet. I'm not even working out yet. Remember, I said I'm going to stack one habit on top of another. I didn't want to cut out sugar. I didn't want to. Cu- I didn't want to stop eating out completely. I didn't want to start the gym. This is how people get burned out very early when they go on a weight loss expedition. Is they say I'm going to completely change my life. No sugar. No carbs. No soda. I'm not eating out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna live in the gym. I'm gonna work out two hours a day, six days a week. Dude, they do that for three days. They get burnt out. Next thing you know, they're fat again. And they've stopped doing, and they've they've stopped the technique, and they're fat again. They stay fat. No, no, no. One habit at a time, guys. This is not going to happen overnight, guys. I said when I was thirty, I weighed three hundred twelve pounds. Gentlemen, I am forty years old today. Now, 
I ended up getting down to, I ended up getting down to 215, maybe 220. I think I was probably 32. So it took me, it, you know, it took, it didn't take me 10 years. It took me a couple of years, but the challenge is staying that way. And I, and thankfully for me, I haven't been over 240, probably 235 pounds since. But the point is, is that cutting all sugar and getting all of my carbs only from green vegetables, that was the single most important element in terms of weight loss and keeping it off. Listen, I institute that practice even today. I cut out all, listen, and I have, I have a sweet tooth. And now because I'm a little bit more advanced with, 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 with the ketogenic diet, I am now looking into stevia. Matter of fact, I've got it up here on my screen. I am going to order pure P Y U R E. It is organic stevia. Uh, it is a sugar. It is a sugar substitute. No carbs, and and it's one of these artificial sweeteners that aren't bad for you. A lot of artificial sweeteners out there are very, very, very bad for you. Some of them are worse than sugar. It's like they taste worse than sugar, and they're worse for you than sugar. So what the fuck would I do that for? No. Um. And I'll and guys, I'll link it in the in in the description. It's called Pure Organic Stevia. Um. So I'm I'm gonna start to look up recipes for that because I don't want my sweet tooth to get out of control, guys. I love my sweets and desserts, but I don't want to be 312 pounds again. So that's the happy medium. But from the onset, I cut all sugar, no sodas, no candies, no cookies, nothing, nothing like that. I started that on a Sunday, gentlemen. The next Sunday, I had lost eight pounds just from doing that. That's not even from the gym. I remember when I was in Atlanta. Um, I, I, I used to drive a forklift with a guy who was real big into fitness and the, and one of the things that he told me, uh, that really sort of stuck with me, he said, Donovan, he said, you know, with, with regards to looking like this and, and this and that and the other, yes, it's very important to, you know, live in the gym, et cetera, et cetera. But honestly, he said, being in shape is 80% diet, 20% working out. He says, if you eat right, you don't have to work out as hard. Your diet, your diet has more to do with your physical fitness level than your exercise regimen. That that's now, of course, he's not talking about bodybuilder steroid guides, things of that nature. He's talking about for everyday Joes like us. So this is what happened. Again, the only carbohydrates I consumed came from green vegetables. No potatoes, definitely not any bread. Absolutely no carbs from anything. Not tortillas, tortilla chip. Guys, I cut out all the junk food, all the sugar. The only carbohydrates I ever got came from green vegetables and that again that was the single most important thing um that's the th that's the single most important habit i enacted um that that's the single most important habit when it came to losing that weight that real that's what really supercharged me number four this is the fourth thing that i decided to do and this was very important this was intermittent in intermittent fasting you can Google intermittent fasting, but the Reader's Digest version of intermittent fasting is fasting every day. So for so some people fast for 18 hours, some people fast for 24 hours, some people go on a juicing cleanse, some people go on a juice fast. This is the way I did it. I The only time that I would eat during the day was from noon until 6 o'clock p.m. So I had a six-hour window to eat, and then I would fast for 18 hours. What intermittent fasting does, guys it kickstarts your metabolism guys so your meta guys your metabolism skyrockets and it's interesting because when you are in a fasted state for some reason it's crazy you seem to have more energy it's it's weird how that works i'm not a scientist i can't tell you why that works but when you're in a fasted state man for some reason like you're you're a little more focused you're a little more clear-headed i don't know why but that's one of the welcome side effects Intermittent fasting also naturally cleanses you, right? So if you eat for six hours, your body, if you are if you don't continue to shovel food into your pie hole every six hours, your body has a chance to really cleanse itself. And during the 18 hours that you are fasting, drink plenty of water and your body will naturally cleanse itself. Uh, listen, intermittent fasting makes you feel better. You don't feel like, and, and again, yeah, when you're coming up on hours 16 and 17, you feel hungry, but the longer you do it, the more your body gets used to it. So yeah, you're certainly hungry when you're on hour 16 or 17, five weeks in, but you're not starving. You don't feel like you're weak or that you're going to just crack and just go eat 15 cupcakes. No, your body will get used to it. You'll adjust to it. Eating a big meal makes you tired. And the reason why it makes you tired is because absorbing calories, those that makes you, that takes energy. Like this is why people fall asleep at, you know, for Thanksgiving. 
you know, they say, well, it's the tryptophan and the turkey. Well, that's part of it. But the other part of it is that you eat so much, your body is processing all those calories. It takes energy to process those calories. It's the same thing with meals. It's the reason why when people go to lunch, then they come back from work, everybody's sleepy because they ate this, they, they this huge meal. And by the way, here's a word to the wise. When you go to the ketogenic diet, you can eat as much as you want. For whatever reason, it does not sap your energy like eating a carbohydrate-rich meal. It's weird how this works, man. So when you come up on hour 18, when noon comes, dude, you can eat a steak, six eggs, some bacon, and, and an avocado and wash that all down with a half gallon of water. Guys, your belly is full, but you don't feel frumpy. You don't feel like you're about to fall asleep. It's weird how this works. Maybe it's the fact that carbohydrates are not present in the body, but that's how it works. Guys, intermittent fasting is a game changer. Listen, it is probably as it's probably as important as cutting out the sugar and the carbs was as, as far as weight loss was was concerned. Google it. There are many, many different ways you can implement intermittent fasting, but I would highly recommend that anyone who is serious about losing weight, you need and intermittent fasting also teaches you discipline. It also teaches you to not eat when you're hungry all the time, because when listen, when you when you get as fat when I was fat, I was eating even when I wasn't hungry. Intermittent fasting lets the body know that I am eating to live. I am not living to eat. I am eating to fuel myself. I am eating to live to the next day. I'm not eating just for the sake of eating. Intermittent fasting, guys, game changer. That Again, intermittent fasting, cutting out, cutting out all the carbs and the sugar, those are the two most important things. Here's another. This is the last thing that I did when it came to losing weight. I started juicing, okay? Now... When I say juicing, this is green juice only. Here's, the, here's a big time mistake that a lot of people make when they decide to start juicing is they just juice nothing but fruits, right? They, they read about all the health benefits of juicing and how it can, you know, uh, your, your, your skin looks good. It's, it's the fountain of youth. It makes you younger. They go, okay, great. I'll juice some strawberries and some oranges and some peaches and some pineapple. Guys, when you juice fruit, that dude, when you, juicing fruit, is more detrimental to your health than eating Snickers bars, than eating junk food with sugar in it. That is concentrated, that is concentrated sugar. You drink, you drink a juice like that on a regular basis, dude, your insulin spikes and you balloon, you blow up. Go to the internet. There are all kinds of stories where people say, well, I started my juicing practice, but I've gained 10 pounds. Well, that's because you're juicing pineapples and cherries and sweet fruits. No, when you, the standard rule of thumb is you eat your fruit and you juice your vegetables. And during this during this cleansing period of losing weight, you're not eating fruit anyway. Only green juice. And here's the thing, you don't have to drink it five times a day, once, once in the morning. Now here's the thing, your green juice does not count towards your intermittent fasting, okay? So what I used to do is I used to wake up at six o'clock in the morning, I'd have a green juice, or I'm yeah, I'd wake up at six o'clock in the morning, I'd have a green juice because by then I hadn't eaten at 12 hours because I stopped eating at six o'clock the next night. And then maybe at nine o'clock, maybe at nine o'clock uh, in the morning, if I were really hungry, I'd drink another green juice followed by another, you know, half gallon of water if I, if I could get it down. I'm still hungry, but that used to hold me over. Now, the reason why people, you guys can Google juicing the, you know, listen, the benefits are, they, they speak for themselves, but listen, guys, the nutrients go right to your bloodstream. Right when you drink green juice, dude, all of the anti, dude, all the antioxidants, the vitamins, the minerals, and the reason why it goes right to your bloodstream and has a much more pronounced effect is because the body doesn't have to break down the fiber to get to the nutrients. This is why juicing is so popular. Juicing, absolute green juicing, absolutely makes you lo look younger. Aside from this gray hair, gray hair that I haven't dyed yet, guys, I look younger. I started juicing when I was 32 years old. Eight years later, I still look like I'm 34, 35 years old. When I tell people I'm 40, I'm going to be 41 this summer. I don't look anywhere near my age. A lot of that has to do with, listen, I have jeans and black don't crack and all that, but green juicing is absolutely, it is absolutely the fountain of youth, that and HGH. Now, the, the only things that you need to be juicing are green, what do they say, carnivorous vegetables, kale spinach, broccoli, cucumbers, celery, collards, asparagus, um, uh, you know, mustard greens, maybe throw in a lemon or lime uh, for taste. Sometimes you throw in a little bit of ginger in the beginning of your, again, guys, stay away from all fruits. 
In the beginning, stay away from beets, carrots, or other sweet vegetables. Again, no sugar. Guys, carrots and beets are vegetables, but they have a lot of sugar in them. People say, well, I had my orange pineapple carrot juice. No, you're going to get fat, sweetheart. You need to stick the green juice. Choke that shit down, man. It, listen, eventually you are going to get used to it. So those are the five things that I did. Um, and like I said, I did it in 21 day cycles. I stacked one. I actually stacked one habit on top of another. I started with the body cleanse, right? I, you know, I, I, I started with the body cleanse. The very next day I said, okay, I'm going to stop eating out. 21 days later, I cut out almost, I cut out my carbs, only got my carbs from green vegetables and cut out all sugar. Then I started intermittent fasting. Then I started juicing. And then, of course, you know, you do the standard thing that everybody knows you should do, which is diet and exercise. You, you, you lift weights, do some cardio. Um, the, the ketogenic diet or the paleo diet, some people like to go on the gluten-free diet. Whatever diet works best for you so long as it's low in simple carbohydrates, meaning bread, um, you know, cheesecake, cake, cookies. Don't eat sugar. Don't eat sugar, don't eat carbs, and you're good to go. Stay with the stay with the ketogenic diet. So, guys, those are the things that I did uh, to go from fat to fit. Hopefully, this helps you guys out. Uh, thank you guys for watching uh, Donovan's Den Volume 17. We've got more to follow in the future. Thanks for watching.